53 and a half minutes after the hour, football and brain injury. That's the focus of a House Judiciary hearing today and sitting front and center, California Congresswoman Linda Sanchez. She's been blowing the whistle on the health risks of concussions and trying to get the rules changed. She's with us this morning and also joining us, former NFL player Nolan Harrison. He's testifying as well today after playing for 10 seasons and suffering several concussions. Good to see both of you. This is an important issue, obviously, that we've been following a lot, you know, each and every little development. We talked to you about it last fall when the House hearings were taking place. Nolan, let me start with you, though. Your playing career, how many times did you suffer a concussion and, and each and every time that that happened were you under pressure to get back out there on the field yeah, there was always pressure to get back out on the field I suffered a couple of major concussions my last one being against the Eagles Herschel Walker need me in the side of the head as I was trying to tackle him it's if you know about Herschel you go low on him but sometimes you do get the worst end of the stick and uh, I don't remember anything after the game but there was no uh, push to keep me out afterwards I practiced the rest of the week the next week and played uh, but I still, to this day, don't have any recollection of what happened after that hit. You know, sort of the ethos in, in any professional sport is you play hurt, but you're not supposed to play injured. But where's that line, and who determines that? Well, I think the pressure, uh, whether it's from the locker room, from peers, you know, from 91 to 2001 when I played, uh, you know, you're supposed to be the human juggernaut. You're supposed mm -hmm. to play and you have to do that to keep your job and, and to keep things going. It's, it was the culture. Congresswoman Sanchez, as a result of the hearings last year, the NFL has made some changes, such as to have a doctor uh, on the sidelines of every game to examine uh, one of the players if they have a concussion. Roger Goodell said, uh, quote, the NFL has taken a much more aggressive approach in recent years in identifying and treating concussions among our own players. We've implemented an awareness campaign to make certain that everyone in the league, including players and coaches, is better equipped to identify concussion symptoms. He's the commissioner of the NFL. Are you satisfied with everything they've done? Uh, well, they kind of came to this dance a little bit late. Um, for years, they denied any kind of link between repeated trauma to the head and brain damage. And um, finally, as a result, I think, of the congressional hearings, they had to step up and admit the link, um, although that's, they still want to fund studies to be absolutely sure. But the majority of independent research shows that that's the case. They have made, um, in the last seven months since, since the first real hearing to to spotlight the issue have made some tremendous strides but there's still a lot more that needs to be done and as far as I'm concerned that's why we continue to have these hearings to check the progress on the NFL. Are you satisfied Nolan? Is there more as the congresswoman says to be done? Oh, there is a lot more to be done. We still don't have in my opinion or I haven't seen in writing any team that has a specific uh, arbitrary or uh, independent uh, neurologist that's mm -hmm. there to judge these guys. There's still no parameters in place on the sidelines that you can say, okay, this guy's had this type of a hit, we're going to keep him out for a certain amount of time. If you don't take that out of the coach's hands, the trainer's hands, the doctor's hands, who are paid by the teams. So even though they have doctors, you say they're still not independent? No, they're not. They're not. And it needs to be an independent person to look out for these players because the culture still exists to where we have to go back out and finish the game. So, so how do you achieve independence? Obviously, somebody's got to pay the doctor's salary. Right. Well, um, they announced that they uh, were going to have independent doctors evaluate. But, but that's the question: is how independent are these doctors really? And um, you know, our players. Yeah, unless the government were to pay for them, who who else might? I don't think taxpayers would really be no. crazy about that. <laughs> So can you ever really have an independent neurologist on the sidelines of a football game? Uh, well, possibly you could if the Players Association and the and the NFL were to negotiate something like that, where maybe it's uh, jointly paid by by the two. Uh, that could be one potential scenario, but. Uh, the question of independence has been a, a problem that's plagued the NFL for quite some time. Something we're going to hear about today at the hearing, uh, again, Roger Goodell uh, sent a letter to 44 governors urging them to uh, to adopt Lystedt's law, which is named after Zachary Lystedt, who was a middle school uh, student in, uh, in Washington State who had a really bad concussion in a, in a middle school football game and played after that. So he's saying, you know, please adopt this law. It's a great thing for young players to be looked after. It, it's, it's one thing to say, okay, fine, let's do it when kids are young. But what about the pros? Isn't this all about the pros? And is that a little bit of, de of a deflection to have them say, oh, look, we're, we're all for making sure that these young players, very important as well, get appropriate medical treatment. But if you're not doing it yourself, are you really following through to the end of the chain? Well, the important thing to remember here is that the NFL is a money maker. And people profit at the expense, unfortunately, of players. And what we've seen with the NFL is young kids in sports at all levels emulate their favorite players. Mm -hmm. And if 
the NFL isn't doing things correctly, um, it's you know, very little chance that it will trickle down um, you know, to youth sports like it should. So the NFL really needs to, to take the lead and really highlight safety. And, and what, one, one last quick point, if we could, Nolan. There's, there's been an indefined link between concussion and dementia. We've seen what's happened to some NFL players over the years. What do you think about that? Have you noticed that your, your cognitive functioning has decreased at all as a result of the concussions you suffered? Well, I'm okay with mine, but I have uh, you know, teammates and, and old friends that have gone through the situation, and, and they are suffering. They're not the same men that they were when we played. And I think that's a problem. And I think as time goes on, it's going to be a more significant problem. That's why things like the Legacy Fund that we've talked about are really, really important because the cost to take care of these guys to make sure that they're going to have the kind of lifestyle they need and the treatment that they have is going to go up and it needs to be addressed. NFL hasn't done it yet. Well, again, this is a very important issue for us. We'll keep on following it closely. Great to see you this morning. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. We'll be watching the hearing today. Thank you. Top stories coming your way right after the break. Stay with us.